welcome back to Design 380. This is a video on housings again. Uh, this is guided. This is not my first attempt. <laughs> I'm going to try and keep the length of this down. Um, what we've got, what we're looking at here is a standard sort of quite compact shaft with two equally sized bearings, 6305 from, uh, they're both from SKF. Uh, the NR here is for the ring. So we're going to be trying to follow along from the uh, given stuff from our class here. This is from Orlov. We're going to be doing a radial uh, assembly here. So there's a hidden uh, split in the housing behind here. So we have to keep that in mind. Uh, what we're going to do is deviate slightly from how it's shown here. Uh, we need to have enough mass on the outside here to take that extra rim, which we can see here, it's a rim at the base. So we're gonna be doing quite a bit of work here. Uh, we also have a problem in here uh, from uh, Orlov has shown, it actually runs counter to some of the Orlov advice. So I'm gonna look at figure 214 from the, the fourth volume here, which is on page uh, 282, which you can't see, hold on. There we go. So we're on page 282 here. We want to, uh, we're actually going to have a stab here at this uh, C uh, version, which is kind of similar to what SK, uh, SKF asks for. This is for their, uh, over here, 6305NR. Uh, here's the standard, the sort of measurements. Perfect. Uh, we have a lot of this already set up. The one thing we do have to watch out here for is DA55. And they kind of over constrain it, but they leave a gap here. Uh, we're gonna do uh, an amalgam of that with this second, uh, where there is no gap, where the, uh, the cap here is actually touching the housing. So we're gonna do a combo of both. So we're gonna follow mostly C with a bit of SKF. So just keep that in mind, we're going to be essentially skipping this little uh, gap here. So we're going to close this up and that'll mean that we have to get rid of one of these touches uh, because of the old rules, not too many touches. So just keep that in mind as we go along. Uh, we're looking at a step here. So we have no history yet. So let's go ahead and get a little bit set up. Inspect section. Uh, I'll just pick the Z wire and YZ. So click and hold. Looks fine. Uh, there's keys in the way at the top here. Let's look at the bottom edges. So we've got a step in the shaft. The hub is assembled onto that. It's the bearing is pushed against it. So the flow line goes through here. Nice. And then the bearing itself is pushed on and held on by a, a bearing nut. Same on the other side. So we've got flow lines going all the way through. So we're avoiding any issues about abutments and all the rest here. Uh, do notice though, there is a very small gap uh, between the shaft and the bearing here. So we're avoiding a double fit here. Um, otherwise, fairly standard little uh, gaps here to keep the KT under control and a little recess here for the end of the threads. Otherwise, standard parts, no surprises. Let's go ahead here and start the history. We can right click at the top and capture design history. It does its usual thing. Makes a whole bunch of parts. If you want, you can give that a name, but uh, rename it slightly out of screen here. We'll just call it uh, setup. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead here and make a housing component. Uh, but first, let's go ahead here and collect all this stuff into a group. Right now it's pullable, meaning I can drag stuff around. So let's get this all set up. If we want, we can try and slip it into this uh, setup feature, our group. Uh, I'm just going to leave it out in the open so we can see what happens. First, let's go ahead here and put all this into one component. I'm going to make it a double underscore because I don't have any name. So we'll call this the cluster as Orlov calls it. And I won't activate it. 
because I just want it to sit there. What I can do is grab all those by shift clicking and just drag them into the cluster. Makes a whole bunch more features. But allows us to now do some other stuff. So for example, I can do a rigid group and make the cluster a rigid group. See a new feature appear. You can still kind of pull it, but it comes all in one piece. We're halfway there. Last, gonna lock the shaft in place by grounding it. One more feature inside the cluster component. Now, can we drag? Nope, 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 perfect. So we're set to go. If we want, we can make another group here. That's out of pay, out of screen here, but I'm creating a group. And we can call that someone else as well if we wish. Uh, rename it to ground or uh, prep, however you want to call it, prep, set up and prep. So we've got set up, which comes automatically, and prep. We are now ready. Everything's compact. We can select a cluster in one chunk. Perfect. So everything's looking good. One more uh, con component. Housing. Uh, it's just, just my habit. Double underscore is a thing I'm adding with no part number. I'm going to make it active. Say OK. Everything get, gets ghosted out. It's fine. We can also turn off the analysis to see the full ghost. So what we need to do is avoid all this stuff. It still allows us to pick things, which is great. So for example, we can see here 5.4 centimeters. Strange. Let's go for millimeters. Edit that guy to millimeters. Let's do that again. 54 in the radius. Uh, I can go to Calc to keep track. It's a habit I have of keeping track of the bigger numbers. Uh, so we have 108 in the diameter. That's our, you know, to avoid the big gear. And you can see the balls here. We would like this housing to go fairly close to them. We might have to go a little bit inboard here with the housing walls to uh, give us some space for the housing paraphernalia, which is our kind of later steps. So, but we do have that 108. That's our major size. So we have to be definitely bigger than that. If everything looks good, which I hope it does, let's go ahead here and make sure housing is active. Go into freeform. Nothing changes. So we're ready to go here. Let's create a box. First, we pick a plane. Again, we can be kind of picky here uh, by just saying, well, let's go ahead here and pick overtly. All the origins right now are overlapping. So what I want is the X, Y plane. And then the center is what it's looking for next. I can pick the origin probably. Maybe not. There we go, starting up. I'm gonna just put this loose to begin with. I'll size it properly when the dialog shows up. So now let's go for that. Make sure it's facing the right way, symmetric. And, you know, it's not bad. So the minimum on this is 108. So as we see, get here, starts protruding out. This is a zero thickness face right now, or surface. Let's go back to that. Uh, in the previous video, we went for each way. Let's continue with that. Uh, the minus is, doesn't matter. We can just get rid of that. Just flips the arrow around. Press the right button. So we're not looking too bad. So if we want to see what's going on in uh, wireframe, we can go for seven or eight. Nine is cuts out the line. So we need to go for seven or eight. This is eight. Let's have a look here. Got quite a gap. It's not a bad plan. So let's go with the Orlovian approach here. This is what we're doing is somewhat realistic. Uh, we're, we're, there's only one shaft in our housing. <laughs> so it's not completely realistic, but we're just kind of going for the sort of standard let's turn around to look at the same way. This is around 150. 
it's not bad let's go with that so 150 triple click just to put it in nice they have the walls quite close i'm going to try and thicken this both ways out uh, through the center they've got the center just in board of the center of the bearings you'll notice it's not the same on both i'm gonna i believe the shaft i have here is symmetrical yeah around that center point so i need to be a little careful if i go too far i'm gonna run out of mass if i go too short like i won't reach the bearing so i need some sort of happy medium we can change this later but it looks like 140 is looking quite good. Maybe even a little smaller. Again, if we turn on our analysis, we can see what's going on a little better, perhaps, is the outside wall of housing. So maybe 140. So there's lots of room here for this part, but I knew I do need to have a little bit here for the some extra material around here. So our maximum value is 140, 150. So if I go down to 135, it gives me some room. Let's go with that. Let's try that. Um, from here. It's tempting to do a bunch of other stuff, like for example, round this off. We'll leave that for now. Uh, but we're not looking too bad. So our only question now is the front. And right now we've got 136. 135 gives us a square. So look at the top here. Uh, so that's not a bad idea. So let's go with length 135, width. 135 height 150 say okay uh, i'm just going to go back to uh six control six for a better view and see here it's not looking too bad like could we just leave it like this only problem is this flat bottom here got quite a bit of fillet up here or around sorry up here it's close to what we have actually the bottom shouldn't be so sharp maybe this is a fillet after the fact why don't we just flatten this face out um it's tempting to just take this whole bottom off but it's more efficient surprisingly to uh, just put a crease on this so looking at the bottom make sure you see the bottom over here i'm going to shift pre-select all these shift select and shift sorry shift double click select each three each of these four edges uh, for those who are in the know, it's held. If we used to, if we double click a normal uh, loop, it gives us the whole loop. This is held up by these star points at each corner. So we have to kind of shift select them all independently. Right click, crease. It gives a yellow preview and it highlights the star points. We're just going to leave it as is, say OK. All that does is gets rid of the fillets in that direction. So we get a creased base. Matches closely to what we get from our love. Okay. Let's finish the form. That's it for the form, right? It's basic. We get this guy, but when we look at our analysis now, oh, solid. Okay, so let's see what's in here in bodies. Body one. So what we need to do here is shell this out, uh, thicken it, something like this. For this, what we have here is looks like a shell might work. Let's hide the cluster. Okay, so let's shell. Just search for shell. Faces bodies. It's asking what to remove. So if we pick this, it'll remove the, the edge of that. It's not what we want. So escape out of that, pick the body in the tree or in the browser. Nice. And now we have inside, outside, both. Let's see here. So I'm gonna go for a wall thickness of five. 
So we're just going to type this in here. So 2.5 one way, 2.5 the other way. Let's have a look. Say OK. Undo. Redo. Meh, nice. See how the cluster fits. It's not bad. It's not, it's right on the, it's not right through the bearings, uh, the balls in the bearings, but it's not too bad. So just keep that in mind. We can adjust this by the shell now. Uh, I don't really want to go back and adjust the housing uh, in the free form. Uh, it's quite common actually, but for this video to keep the complexity low, I learned the hard way uh, to keep it below three hours. <laughs> Let's just go with this. So we've got a housing with a freeform plus shell. Nice. Next, let's have a look at Orlov. This one is clamped to the left side. We call this bearing one or whatever, but this is the left side when we're looking at the right view of the, you know, uh, what's it called? Fusion. Uh, the leftmost one has the ring. The right one is floating. Interesting. So as this heats up or cools down, it allows it to pull the bearing. Now, this is not to say the bearing's loose inside the housing. It's press fit, but it's able to shift with heat expansion. Now, this will be very small shifts. It'll put quite a bit of side load on this deep groove ball bearing, which is kind of what they're intended for. So this will work. All right, so we've got also equal sizes here. So this will use us to our advantage. The only problem is this dilemma here with the ring and the caps. So we also, and just to make a point here, there's quite a bit more material on the outside for a fastener. So we'll kind of follow that. Let's go ahead here and make some parameters first to guide our sketch. Let's call something like nominal wall thickness, five. And while we're at it, let's go ahead here and do that right away. See our 2.5 here, we can call that NWT divided by two, nothing should change. And NWT divided by two, perfect. Let's add a standard fillet or round. Well, we shouldn't be doing rounds uh, standard, but let's go for standard fill, they're known as uh, two. It's quite a common Orlov amount. And we're going to call that standard fillet. So if in doubt, this is our fillet size. It's enough for now. So for example, we're going to be putting that standard fillet in here to match this fillet here. So we can see standard fillets everywhere. So we'll be using that repeatedly. Not this, it's a big fillet. So that's fine. It looks like we're ready for a sketch. So make sure we're in housing still. Create sketch. Uh, you can see it highlight correctly. I'm gonna hide that origin now. If I want, I can turn off my analysis, which oh, wrecks everything until I turn slice on. Either way. Now, we're gonna be checking this guy for now. So we're going up to the edge of the ring and beyond the end of the bearing here. And otherwise looking fairly straightforward. This looks like it's aligned. This looks like it's aligned. So we can do all that. Let's actually start at the bottom. This is easy. So we'll, ma we'll mass things in and then we'll uh, be working from there. So first a rectangle. Is that right? Could be. So let's project some things for this guy. So it's tempting to use project, but the better one might be here, intersect. So wherever this free form, then shell turns up, that's where it sticks out into the sketch plane. Say, okay, then we can start just getting at it. Sketch, want that to be aligned. It's a little bit above, so let's go for our It's tempting here, and I am going to use this a lot. We can use the standard 
fillet size as well for a lot of stuff. So for example, I'm going to use the two, if it's not aligned, I'm going to say it's two millimeters not above or below or offset, whatever it is. So there's by two already in action. This is aligned. It's beyond the bearing. Let's see where that ends up. We're going to need to know where this bearing is. So let's go for that intersect again. So I need to know the beginning and the end of the bearing. What else do I need to know? Maybe just the end on this side. So what's the furthest in it goes? What else? The ring on the other side. And it looks like at least maybe the ball part of the ring. We can always add this later. So there we go. I'm doing well. So I'm going to say, let's have it. Well, we're doing two for everything here, so why not do that as well? So let's go for our dimension. It wants to stick out beyond. And I'm just going to go with that standard size again. Nice. Thickness, we don't know. Let's go for. So it's tempting to just do this and type a number. And what I can do to keep my life happy, sorry, SolidWorks Escape toggle driven. What I, this what this lets me do is kind of pull it into something that looks about right. And then I can actually type the number in. It's about 10-ish actually, maybe, which is strange. Well, actually not strange at all. We can toggle it back and then we can type in NWT times two. Nice. If you want to change that, you could always go in and for example, say three or whatever you want. But for us, let's go for two. So just undo back to two times NWT. Nice, we're gonna sweep this. So we're gonna try a little prototype here. I'm gonna come back to this in the history. Let's finish the sketch. Not much is happening. So let's do a little test here, sweep. Again, still in the housing. So I'm doing all this. Single path, profile is what we just sketched. Path is the corner. It's gonna do a cut. But what we want is a joint. Let's try that. Turn on our analysis. Sometimes it gets hidden by the sketch uh, slice. Um, sometimes it looks a little strange, like things are getting out of control here. So let's give our sketch a name. Profiles of various types and just hide it for a second. It looks good. So doing well. That approach seems to work. Let's go ahead here and build up the beginnings of our caps. I'm going to do this part now on both sides at once. So this is our mass. So it's tempting again. It's all works. We want to go back and just make a new sketch. Let's not do that. How about a new sketch? A new part of a sketch that we already have. We're going to do a revolve this time. So let's go center line. And if we want, we can switch this over to central line style. Sorry, my mouse is taking up half the table here. So next, let's have a look. Rectangle. So I'm going to build it out here first. So a rectangle. And extra bit. You can either put another rectangle or just extend it out a bit. Making sure not to accidentally lock to the middle point. Yeah, looks okay. So things are doing what we want. Now uh, we can start putting some constraints on here right away. So I want to be on this guy. Perfect. Okay, and if I want to move it closer, I can draw a box around the whole thing, pull it into place. Sometimes things get in the way. So the cluster, now we see the point of making the cluster a component. 
hide that whole thing. We can also hide the body. Kind of useful, kind of not. So let's just keep on going. This looks aligned. Let's pull this into shape. It's still selected. Let's pull it closer. And get jumping around. And then go for, I can either do a uh, coincident or a collinear or whatever I want. Let's lock everything into this point. Nice. Looks about the same, maybe a little bigger. This side here looks about half and half. So let's use our parameters again. So we'll call this NWT, say, oh, sorry, times T. And we can then call this guy NWT. Mm, it's not quite thick enough. Another way to do this, if we want half and half, is to say this, whatever this is, we'll just say that one. D14 is what we're after. Sorry, delete clear I think out. D14 divided by two. So whatever that is, half. So if I now change this to NWT times three. Yeah, that's a little more what we see here. Perfect. Got a step. So we've already got the thing set up uh, for the finding it inside of the wall. Now it is tempting here to just sign line this up. However, it's going to be right on the freeform generated shell. So I'm not ultra keen about that. So let's go ahead here and say, you basically use some uh, parameters here to keep sure, make sure it's inside. So there's a point here on the bearing inside of the bearing. Let's keep that on for a second. We'd probably like this to be in the middle here, more or less. Let's use the parameter NWT. Looks strangely not straight. Sometimes the cross hatching puts off your eye. And now it looks straight. You can hide the body as well. It is straight, but these cross hatches can some, uh, sometimes make things which are vertical look bent. You know. Let's see what else we got here. We want to go beyond, so let's use our same logic here for this guy. So the dimension from the inside of the bearing to this is our standard fillet, which is turning into our standard size for offsets. Perfect. It's quite good. I'm gonna do the same over here, but first let's set it up so it makes sure it works. Finish the sketch again. It'll have to rebuild that foot, which is a little painful. But now let's go ahead here and do a revolve. Both of those guys, axis. Uh, not a cut, but a join again. Just making sure this is not pro poking through or causing any problems. That's good. So that works. Let's do the same on the other side. Edit the sketch. Double click it. Now this makes our life a little easier here. So if we're going to follow the same logic, we need two millimeters again. So let's do an intersect. Intersect for the inside edge of the bearing. And we'll do a rectangle. This time we can snap directly on. Snap, go right through. Dimension it kind of as we go here this time since we know what we're doing. And let's see here. Let's line that guy right. So that's where we want to be. So just get rid of the cluster here for a second. I want to be aligned with this, so coincident. This edge with that point. Perfect. Now 
Uh, we have to be a little careful here. This is lined up. So uh, we already have enough to get this done. So another part. So I'll stick it onto there. Straight, horizontal, vertical. This is already set up. So let's line that guy up. Yeah, it doesn't matter which one you pick, but there we go. And let's try using our NW, our nominal wall thickness here again. It's close, right, it's close. So we're going right to the edge of the wall. So we could just say plus something, but what I'm gonna say here is actually plus our standard fillet. Because we're basing everything on these two simple parameters, it's very unlikely that we'll lose this edge or it'll stick out or something like this. So this is probably fairly safe. Let's make sure we're looking good on the cluster. Excuse me, uh, nice. Finish the sketch. Nothing happens until we, oh, nice. We can just add this. Might have to press control or command for me to turn off the preview so I can add, make sure your sketch is also visible. Visible. If it's invisible, you might not be able to do this properly. So just turn it on and join again, it's fine. So now we have two. We do have one important measurement here. We're gonna have to have an edge here. So, There is an error coming up here, kind of on purpose. Uh, so I can make this as simple as I can, but not too simple. Uh, we do need to have another rim like this at the base, around the back of the part. We need to split it. The problem here is this is quite thin because of the ring. Now, there's two ways to go at fixing this. Um, so if we look down from above, we can see what's happening. So we can either make these feet smaller, which is feasible, right? So we can figure out how to do that. So if I want to make, for example, this measurement the same as whatever is gonna come behind the part, we'll see that in a second, uh, we can do that. Um, the other way is to actually modify the shape of the housing, painful. Third way is to actually adjust the shell. Let's try that first. So. I'm going to use the history marker here so I can drag this guy. So I'll just zoom here. I can grab this thing and pull it back before the sketch. Everything disappears, but it's still in the history. It's in the future history. So I'm going to adjust my shell. There's my NWT again. So you can actually adjust this kind of by leaving the bows on, it's a bit more robust by just changing this, for example, to NWT on its own. No. <laughs> so you can see where we're going. And we can make the outside thickness zero. This gives us a deeper amount of material here. It's close to the ring, it's close to the inside edge of the bearing. It's not too bad. We might still be okay with our plan but we have more information, more space information. We have more space here. So we can maybe just cut down our foot sweep, say, okay. Nothing bad happens because we have to have a look at the history. Let's step by, step out. There's our sketch. Does it work still? It's not bad, it's still touching here, still touching here. We might be okay. Let's try that. Let's do the sweep. Still works, nothing red. Revolve still work. Got a thicker edge here now. And yeah, this one sticks way out. But you can see on here, this is similar here. We've got quite a bit of mass on the outside here. It's normal. So other than changing the shape of the housing, which is the next option, let's try for this. Now, one thing we notice is this here is quite a bit outboard of that. So let's See if we can figure out how to measure that. Can we measure it? So 
No, let's measure from this face. It's not letting us. Oh, show snap points. There's one. 6.98 paragraph 7. Let's close that. We can adjust our sketch. Right click somewhere on it. Edit sketch. Now, it's tempting to just go ahead here and move this, but everything else is lined up on this. Oh, painful. But one thing, which is quite easy to do, is just put an extra line on here and just move this guy back. Seven. To be a safe, let's go for eight. What does that do? Well, nothing to the sweep until we adjust it. All we have to do is then get rid of that extra profile. We have a smaller foot. It's not exactly Orlov, but it's not far off. It's not bad. So all we've done is adjusted the sweep by breaking up that profile. Again, to reiterate, if we get rid of all this stuff and we've used it to control other parts of the sketch, we'll lose all that data and we'll get the sea of red. So it's much easier, and I mean much, way easier to just adjust the sweep profile by adding an extra line and then adjusting the sweep. That is the way to go here. This allows us to use this step, hopefully, to end up around the back of this guy without sticking out. Let's try that. So sketch one more time. You can either adjust it in here by double clicking, find it somewhere, edit sketch, either way. I'm gonna hide the cluster because it's getting in the way. It's kind of good because I've got this. What is this? It's NWT times two. We can't see it on our love, but it's probably about the same size as this on both top and bottom. So let's maybe try this dimension lined up with this guy. Might be good. So let's try that first. It's gonna be around here. How do we center it? One way to do this is to do a point or type in point. Put it in the middle. Snap it to the or the sorry, middle, middle of that edge. And then put it on with a coincident constraint onto the center line. Nice. We can also do if we want coincident with this edge down here, so that'll line it up. You have to be a little careful here, right? Don't want it sticking out, right? There's no sign of it sticking out on the inside. That would make the casting more complex. So I can undo here, I'm undoing. Another way to do this is to do the old special because our standard offset, which we're calling standard fill it, is to, it'll put it in the middle of our edge, perfect. So keep in mind, this got pulled across by moving our shell. So it moved all the sketches in. Perfect. So we're doing well. Next, this is my new sweep. So let's go ahead for that. Let's put that one on this point. And then if we want, we can use an equals to get, oh, oh hold on. We need, okay, so we need two of those. So let's dimension it this time then equal to that. Now, whatever this is, that's the same here. This will be our swept path. Let's finish the sketch. Now, it's quite tempting to figure out, well, we need a split here to make a sweep and all this stuff, but can we just modify the sweep? Why don't we just try adding, turning off the preview? No. Oh. Well, that's not bad. It rebuilds everything. Perfect. Looking good back here. So this is exactly what we want. Uh, unfortunately, we don't want all the stuff here. How do we get rid of that? There's two ways. We can either, either do another revolve just to delete the stuff. Another option is to try delete. So let's, out of interest, let's try another delete here. So I'm going to try picking some stuff. What happens if we just pick these two faces and press delete? Not no. How about all of these guys? No. 
How about, oh, <laughs> dragon, it's not right. How about everything quick and hold that space? Can I just press delete now? No. So there's a bit of fiddling here. I admit that. And hold down shift here, that's the face. How about that? No. Right, so it is kind of painful. It, if sometimes if you can get it to work, you'll it'll be great. Otherwise, eh. so let's use this sweep again. So is there a way to cut that off? How do we get this easily? So can we just add a rectangle? Maybe. So I'm good. I'm putting a rectangle in there. Why is my mouse not working? Here we go. Uh, point. I've got a point here. How do you get that on there? Over here. Uh, you can access, add it. Once you've got it, if you carefully grab, carefully grab it, you can pull it around. Point. Put it in the middle. Make that coincident. Actually, sorry, there's a whole bunch of work for nothing. <laughs> what we need to do is put the middle on the origin. And we can line this guy up on this vertex. Let's just try it to make sure it works. Finish the sketch. Nothing happens. But we could do another revolve here. This guy, axis, same one, cut away. Nice. It's good. What else can we do here? Is there another way to go at this? One of the disadvantages of this is extra sketch. I'm not quite keen. I'm pressing undo here. I'm undoing. There's other ways to do this, perhaps. What about we have this edge here? Can we use it for something? What if I just try extrude right now? No. So one thing that doesn't work it's tempting to think because normally in fusion land we can just grab a face and do an extrude if i can grab it there we go so this works but why not uh it's a curved face right so it's kind of kind of tempting oh i got this stuff going on here it's kind of tempting to just have this all work I think I might have just lost my redo. Here we go. Uh, for me, in Fusion, it's Command Shift Z. Sorry, not Y. We can go all the way forward. Nice. So just undo redo. So tried it, didn't like it. Tried a different way, doesn't work. Redo. Let's go ahead and fiddle that sketch one more time. We've got all sorts of bodies in here. We've got a bigger bottom part here, so we need another uh, rectangle or another edge. I'm gonna be a little more efficient this time. Just if you line it up, it'll snap, but it won't create a constraint until you pick it. Last but not least, put this in. And yeah, it overlaps, but we don't care. Edit that cut. So if we can grab it, I want to add this. So if I, if you want, you could try adding it like so, draw a box around the extra geometry. Make sure it's cutting right. Nice. Um, while you're at it, just make sure it's cutting only the body. If you have the cluster turned on, it'll cut a whole bunch of stuff. Just hide the cluster. It won't cut. Do some work. Nice. Turn the cluster on and make sure it worked. Looks good. Uh, oh, we have to split this because it's right now it's one big body. Is there a tool for that? Yeah, of course. Split body. The body to split is the housing. And again, we can hide the cluster so it's not getting in the way. And the splitting tool 
we can use our or local origin here and extend say okay we now have two parties nice I'm gonna we're gonna need a fillet here though right we have all these fillets going on so I'm gonna leave that split for now so it's been a while I'm gonna stop this video here we're gonna do the caps in the next video but for now let's leave it as is except for one last thing we're just gonna hide that split keep it in the history so that we still have it but we'll keep it in our pocket uh, as not done yet so again we can always turn it on and turn it off so for now let's do the caps and then we'll do the split so caps fill it split and then we should be done thanks for watching so far uh, we're gonna finish up there we'll maybe leave the cluster visible so we can see what's going on we're looking good uh, from here on it's caps Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.